with the resting place of the country's first Labour Prime Minister, Michael Joseph Savage, and the 19th century defence force around it will once again be open to the public for booked out tours. Today, the tunnels at Auckland's Bastion Point were open to the media for the first time since they were excavated 13 years ago. Our reporter, Jesse Chang, and our visual journalist here in Auckland, Dan Cook, went underground to take a look. Every day, crowds of tourists flock to the memorial to Michael Joseph Savage that overlooks the Waitemata Harbour. But unbeknownst to many, on the eastern side of the minaret and the gardens lies the metal entrance to the fort system built nearly 140 years ago. It's a three metre climb down into the dark before you walk through a narrow channel. So this is quite a confined area. It's damp, cold uh, and quite muddy, um, but we're heading into the main gun pit area now. Only one gun pit has been completely excavated and the Auckland Council's Principal Heritage Advisor, George Farrant, says surveys will be taken on the second. As part of Archaeology Week, the tunnels are being open to the public. It's not often that archaeological sites can be seen um, indefinitely because normally they're buried and covered up again, but in this case we've left the excavated tunnels in one gun pit clear underneath. We've got lighting and ventilation in there and periodically we do take uh, special groups who have expressed an interest down there. Michael Joseph Savage's mausoleum was built on top of the fort. Mr Savage was Prime Minister from 1935 to 1940 when he died of cancer. His government is remembered for introducing free universal health care and superannuation and Mr Ferrant remembers how he was revered by the public. He was brought in the funeral cortege by train up the length of the North Island with great ceremony and great anguish on the part of the people who gathered at every little wayside stop and station uh, to pay their respects to him. Uh, it was probably equal only to the outpouring of grief after Princess Di's death. Mr Farrant says it's not common knowledge that the memorial for Michael Joseph Savage is also his resting place. He says for a while there were questions over where the former Prime Minister's coffin actually was after they couldn't detect it in the sarcophagus. We scanned in through there and we found gravel, maybe a stack of concrete blocks in this position to hold the lid up. And then it dawned on us from access to parliamentary archives that in fact it was below floor level. So the sarcophagus itself is a beautiful piece of symbolism rather than function the sarcophagus. Nati Fatua Orake refers to the area where Mr Savage's tomb is as Kohi Maramara, a landing place for Waka. One of its trustees, Nari Blair, says while the iwi recognises the importance of Sir Michael and all the things he did for the country and Māori, his resting place is ironic. He was and ultimately buried on, on land that was uh, wrongfully taken off us and, and has never been returned. But um, um, I mean, we own all the land around it, we manage it, and it's open for public use. But, um, yeah, we've always looked a little bit um, um, sideways at, at how the memorial is, is managed. The mausoleum and the fort system will be open for two tours tomorrow, but both are already booked out. In Auckland, for Checkpoint, call Jesse Chang TNA.